Hey, what's up? This is Reed. I've seen a lot of comments recently about how much money it must take to run automations around my house. So I took that as a challenge. I wanted to see the best devices I could get for $200 and show you a bunch of automations that you can do with them. I thought carefully about what makes the cut because this video is not sponsored. So I was able to choose which devices I actually prefer. And at the end of this video, I'll share why I chose these devices and where to go from here. The first thing I would get is an Echo Dot. The reason why is that I'll be using it to run all of my automations. The routines on these things have come a long way and there's quite a bit you can do on them that I'll show you in just a minute. Of course you can control devices with your voice and hundreds of other things. If you're going to put an Echo Dot in your kitchen, I highly recommend a mount like this. It's only $12 and it's nice to keep all the cords off the counters. Why sensors are how I'm going to be able to trigger my automations and these things just became compatible with a routine so I'm really happy about that. I love these little sensors because they're so inexpensive and I'll put links down in the description on everything you need to get started because you will need a wise camera to use these sensors but the wise cams are a great 1080p camera anyways and I highly recommend it. You can use it as a baby monitor to watch your pet while you're gone, put it outside or in the garage and that's where I'm going to use it in this video. Now that I have an Echo Dot and Y sensors, I can put a contact sensor on a door and have the Echo device announce when that door is open. Back door open. This is perfect for when you have kids or if you have a dog who thinks that a real family lives down the street. Come on, Luna! To do this, create a routine and have the Y's contact sensor be the trigger of the routine. For the action, select messaging. Type a custom message like front door open. You may want some tweaks like only run this routine once every couple of minutes. That way if someone's going in and out of the door really fast, it's not announcing it a million times. Wise sensors also notify you in the Wise app if a door was left open, which is really useful. With the Wise motion sensor, you can put that in your kitchen and it can automatically trigger routines on your Echo device. So if you go in the kitchen in the morning, it can automatically start playing the news. And if you go in the kitchen for lunch, then it can start playing a specific Spotify playlist. If the routines ever get annoying, you can just flip the switch to disable it. And I did some more videos on routines and whys, so if you want to watch those after this video, they'll have some more ideas. Now that we have some automations running, it's time for some lighting. And in my opinion, smart light switches are much more user friendly and can be less expensive than smart light bulbs. The Casa Smart Wi-Fi light switch has worked really well for me and it's only $20. You don't need a hub, so it's really easy to get up and running with this thing. Currently, I have ours automating our front porch lights by turning them on at sunset and turning them off at bedtime. It's really easy to set up on your phone and you can control it remotely. Another place for this smart light switch is the kitchen because there's a lot of light bulbs and you can control them all from one smart switch. And if you already have a wise motion sensor there, then you can have all the kitchen lights turn off if no one's in the room. And if someone walks back into the kitchen, the lights can automatically turn back on. I love how easy and affordable these automations are. One thing that you might not realize you can get on a budget is a MyQ Smart Garage Opener. And this thing can control a large range of garage openers as it acts as a universal remote for your garage. With the device installed, you can open and close your garage from your phone. It also comes with a sensor that mounts to your garage door to let you know if the door was left open. That way if you're leaving on vacation and you forgot to close your garage door, you can just do it from your phone. It's not perfect though. I've been using it for a little over a year and about once a month I'll get a false positive alert saying the garage door was left open when it wasn't. I think it happens when I open and close the garage door really fast. And that's why I leave a wise cam in there. Now I can just check it on the app to see if the garage door really is open. But even with this slight annoyance, I think it's still worth it for the price. I'd probably want a wise cam in there anyways just to keep an eye on things. I know I just said I like smart light switches better than smart light bulbs, but you still may want a smart light bulb. And I have a lamp in my family room, which is a great spot for one. I'm recommending E-Light because of the price and how compatible they are as you continue to build out your smart home. There are plenty of other options out there like Tekken or LifeX that will also work really well. You can create an Alexa routine to automatically turn on the lights 30 minutes before sunset. You can even have it slowly turn on the lights by selecting ramp brightness, which I really like. You can create a routine that's triggered by your voice. So you can say, Alexa, it's movie time, and the lights in your kitchen will turn off 
and the lamp in your family room will dim. And then when the movie's over, you can say, Alexa, movie finished. And then the lamp will turn back up in brightness, as well as some light strips. These light strips by Minger are very bright, and I bought them for the TV light strips video I did recently, and I liked them so much that I installed them under my kitchen cabinets. And I think they look really good, especially for the price. They aren't smart light strips, but you can't control the brightness with the attached controller. And to automate them, all I had to do was attach a smart outlet by Tekken, and it works great. Now I can have the light strips turn on and off with motion, just like the kitchen ceiling lights. However, if there's motion in the kitchen and it's after 7 o'clock, then just the light strips will turn on and not the ceiling lights, because the light strips are much easier on the eyes when it's late at night. And this is nice that it just does this all on its own, and it gives the kitchen a nice relaxing feeling late at night. Here are a few more ideas that you can use with this setup. You can use Alexa Guard, which will randomize your lights at night to make it seem like your home. It can also use the microphones on the Echo Dot to let you know if it hears glass breaking or smoke or CO alerts. The Wisecam can also let you know if it hears smoke or CO alerts as well. You can also create a group in the Alexa app for all of your lights. That way it makes it easier to control them with your voice or in the app, or you can create a routine with that group and have them automatically turn off the lights at night before you go to bed so you don't have to worry about it. And this is just scratching the surface because there's so much more you can do, especially when you add more devices like a smart thermostat, video doorbell, or lock. As you add more smart devices, it will open up the doors to more automations that you can run in your house. And if you know you're going to upgrade a smart things hub down the road, then your Echo Dots, your Casa light switch, your Yi lights, they're all going to work great with smart things. But Wise and Tekken, they will still work with smart things, but it will require a little extra learning about virtual switches. So if you know you'll probably get into smart things, then I recommend getting more Z-Wave and Zigbee devices. You can also get MyQ to work with smart things but you'll need to add a SmartThings multi-purpose sensor to the garage door. The good news is, if you decide you want more premium devices down the road, you can still keep using all the devices in this video. For example, if you want all your light switches to be Lutron Caseta, then you can move that Casa light switch to automate your front porch light. You can just set it and forget it, and it won't be annoying if all the rest of your light switches are Lutron. Hopefully this video gave you some ideas on how to get going with a smart home on a budget and I'll be doing videos with more devices and advanced automations in the future, so make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.